Today we're going to learn how to train our own custom model to create AI art using Alpaca right within Photoshop. We're going to be working with two distinct styles, a low poly characters model and a digital fantasy. Now this is perfect if you need a very particular style for a project or for a number of images or artwork and it allows you to create these beautiful stylized results without these long complex prompts that can be annoying and frustrating for a lot of people. Now Alpaca are sponsoring this video so if you're looking for more information about them check out the link in the description. Now to get started all you need to do is head to Alpaca and if you signed up head to your dashboard or log in. Over on the left here you're going to see a tab called models. Click that. Now I've got a model down the bottom here but we're going to add a new custom model here by clicking this button and we're going to fill out these details give it a name base model and keyword. So I've got here low poly characters. My base model is going to be the Alpaca model version three. And my keyword is just going to be low underscore poly. And we will need to use this keyword in our prompt to reference our model more effectively. And I click get started. You see here some requirements. So a minimum of 15 images, a maximum of 100 images. And you're going to want to try and get all the images about the same. So pretty much the same resolution. And I'm going to go through later how you can very quickly convert a bunch of images to that one resolution for training. So if you have trouble doing that one, then I do it quickly. I'll cover that at the end of the video. But for now, I can click here to upload some images. For now, I have this set of images of low poly characters. I'm just going to hit control A to highlight them all. Click open. And it's going to pop them all in a grid here so I can review them. They're all square, all the same resolution. They're all 1024 by 1024 pixels. And I click next. Then I'm going to enter a few prompts in order to give it something to work with. There are some prompt examples here. If I want to, I can find something like maybe a character, like say mythical creatures. And you'll see there's a few there that you can actually start with if you want to. But now I'm going to actually uh, just put here low underscore poly style, comma, and just sort of work where that'll fit best in this particular prompt. So pop it there, pop it at the end, put this here, and I'll put some custom prompts in these last ones here. Now you don't have to fill all these out. I'm just gonna leave these five. I wanted a couple of basic ones here as well. So I've got some of the examples and some other bits and pieces there. I'm going to click next to move on to the next step. It says to, you can have use recommended training settings. I recommend leaving that on if you want to, you can explore that if you know what you're doing, if you've used Stable Diffusion, but otherwise I'd recommend leaving that ticked. And we just click Launch Training. And it will upload the images. If you scroll down, you'll notice that the model is there. If I hover, it says the model is queued and training will start soon. Then after a minute, it'll start the process. And after about 45 minutes, so I was able to get this uh, I then click the model selection button and you get some basic instructions here. The idea is to pick images that are sort of closest suited to the style you're after. So I click choose model. I've got my prompts here that I entered, but essentially I want to compare and see which model I think looks the best for what we're trying to achieve. I really like this middle one here. So I'm going to go with option four and then it's going to load some other options to compare against. And again, I still think option four is the best. So I press that again. This time I think I'll go with option five and click choose model. I then give it some time to make the model available for me to use in Photoshop. So I've opened up Photoshop. I've got Alpaca open here on the right. I've got a blank canvas, which is 1024 by 1024 pixels. Same resolution as our training images, uh, just to get the best results. So first thing we look at is I have Imagine open here so I can start generating images. Under model, I have Alpaca version three, as well as the others, but I also have low poly characters and we'll also add in another model later to experiment with also. But first thing I'm gonna do is hit, I hit control A or select all to select the whole document. So now I can actually start to generate images. What I'm actually gonna do here is I'm gonna type in a prompt. I have a powerful orc ready for battle in a mythical realm. I'm leaving all the settings at default and I'm going to actually keep the model on Alpaca version 3 because we're going to do one on that and compare it to the low poly model. So let's hit generate and see what images it comes up with. So you see Alpaca has created some really excellent imagery here. I'm going to add all of these onto the canvas by clicking add all. And this will put them into a folder as separate layers. And you can see just how stunning these images are. 
straight up without the custom model, they look pretty amazing. But now what happens if we go back to Alpaca, you go back to tools and imagine, but now I'm gonna to switch to low poly characters and I'm gonna hit our little token low poly. So I'm gonna say a low poly style powerful orc ready for battle. You, I think you only need to actually put low poly in there, but I like to be more descriptive with it. I'm gonna hit generate and we'll compare the results. Now you can see we have our orc much closer to the style of images we uploaded before. There's a few different options, but overall it's done a really great job of adhering and changing that style quite dramatically based on the images we've sent to it. But let's experiment with one more thing. We've added a low poly style as part of the prompt. So let's head back to Alpaca version three and generate with this exact same prompt. And you can see it's distinctly different from the style we were after. Still stunning images, but that custom model really has nailed down the style we wanted to go for. And after generating a few images, you can really see the difference from left to right, going from alpaca on the left and low poly on the right, just the stylistic differences between these images. But let's add another layer and fill it with white. So I've got this layer, I filled it with white, and now we're gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna grab my brush tool, I'm gonna to grab black on the left, and I'm gonna bring this brush size down, harden this up a little bit, and we're just gonna draw a scene. So I'm gonna draw kind of like a floating mountain. And over here I'm gonna draw just kind of like a little castle or temple. So now I have this sketch, which looks pretty awful. And we've got like a bit of a castle, some like some mountains, a floating mountain, sun in the sky and clouds. So now, if I go to tools and sketch, it's gonna hit select all. And even though it's not a character, I'll keep low poly there and we're gonna give it a description. We've got a floating mountain in the sky among the clouds and sun, castle on the ground, mountains in the distance. Now, again, because it's not an accurate sketch, I need to come down to sketch type, where it says rough, I'm gonna go doodle, because it's really not much more than that. I hit generate, and we get this really cool effect. You can see how it's kind of used my sketch to create this, and it's not exactly in line with it, but because of how rough it was, I think it's done a pretty good job. It has moved the sun, but I'm okay with that. It's done something a little bit different with this one, but this is a great way to combine some basic sketches in order to control your layout. We see we have the castle down here and the floating mountain, and keep in mind that you don't have to generate the whole image at once. You can select certain parts of it to generate at one at a time. So you're gonna try something a little bit different this time. I've got this sketch of a gnome. I've selected the canvas. You can hit Control A to select your full canvas. And we're gonna go over here to Alpaca, and we're gonna to go to the Sketch tool. And we're gonna render this sketch into some colored AI art. So first of all, I'm gonna choose Alpaca version three, and I'm gonna add a prompt. A mechanical gnome builder, reflective glasses, white beard, weapon in hand. I'm just gonna produce two images, and we're gonna generate and see what that looks like without using our custom model. And on its own, Alpaca has created some pretty excellent looking imagery and a pretty unique style. But now we're going to try the digital fantasy model. And one thing I'll mention is you do need to make sure you deactivate this layer and go back to your original sketch, otherwise it will use the generation as a sketch. So I'll go back to Alpaca, Tools, Sketch, and where it says Alpaca version three, I'm gonna choose Digital Fantasy, the other model I mentioned earlier in the video. This time I add our token, I see style, comma, and let's compare the sketch to our fantasy model rendering. You can see a very distinct difference in style, one that matches our model a bit more closely, which is pretty cool. So if we compare these, we have the sketch, we have our packer, we have our model, which is a little bit more vibrant, and our sketch again. So overall, a pretty cool job Alpaca will do with that model in sort of stylizing your sketches. So if you do a lot of drawing and you want to have a very particular style for rendering those sketches with AI, then this is a really powerful tool to make that happen. Now we're gonna try the same process on this wizard here. We're going to go into our packer. Again, we're gonna to go to our packer version three, give it a new prompt, a wizard in purple robes, white beard, weapon in hand, and I'm gonna generate that. And I'm also gonna generate digital fantasy with digital fantasy style so we can compare the two. Here we have our original sketch and then our alpaca version three renders, which do look pretty cool. And then our 
digital fantasy art, which has that very particular style to it, and I think it's turned out really good. But let's head back to our sketch, because there's something I want to show you that you can do with sketches to get a little bit more out of it, and that is we're going to come down, and in regard to how the sketch is drawn, you want to actually select the type of sketch you're using. This one is reasonably accurate, a little bit rough, so this time let's go with rough. And with the sketch fidelity, we can bring that down to say 0.8, and it will give Alpaca a little bit more freedom to play without relying so heavily on the sketch, but using it as a reference. So let's generate and see what we get. And now with the added freedom, we've got that digital fantasy paint style, and a little bit more sort of free flowing in how it's interpreted the sketch. So overall, that's a pretty pretty cool technique and a way to sort of have a bit more fun while rendering your sketches with that style that you've trained. So you can see just how powerful training your own model is, and now you can access it right within Photoshop by using Alpaca's AI platform. Pretty amazing stuff, and I hope that's given you some ideas to try out. Now, as I mentioned earlier, if you're looking for ways to sort of crop your images for your training in bulk using Photoshop, check out the video on the screen right now. It'll help you do that. Otherwise, I want to thank Alpaca for sponsoring this video. Check them out using the link in the description below. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you again soon. Have a great day.